um, how many people in this room feel they have a even a semi-sophisticated or, or a sort of critique of capitalism? How many people feel like capitalism is actually not a bad thing? It's a force for good. It can be a force for good. So I, I asked this question in India. I just came from India. I was uh, there for a month just traveling um, to uh, a room of about 500 youth in a, in a community called Oroville in southern India. Um, there was not one person in the room who uh, was supportive of the capitalist system, which was shocking, you know, uh, because, you know, we're fed to believe that somehow this is the engine of innovation and this is why we have everything we have. And, um, and, and I think that's kind of what I'm, what I'm hopeful about. I, I see these movements in the global south, Brazil, India, South Africa, Kenya, Nigeria, where there's this huge resistance. There's a huge, like a next generation of, of people coming who understand structurally what's happening in the world. Um, they don't have that privilege to blind them. Um, they understand that the system is oppressing 99% of humanity and would never say that this is a great thing because they're not in the, the bubble that benefits from it. And you're seeing this massive um, resurgence of social movements in the South, whether that's the, you know, the Zapatistas in, in Mexico, the, um, landless people's movement like MST in Brazil, the, you know, even Occupy here in the north or, or the Indignados in, in Europe, um, the Umbrella movement in, in Hong Kong, um, the landless people's movement and, and, and pro-democracy movements in Russia and India, all over the world, they have a very similar critique, which is we have a system that does not work for the majority of us. Um, and that's so important to understand the sort of structural aspect, because when you understand that capitalism is the root of all of our issues, then you understand why we're kicking out undocumented workers, uh, why ecological collapse is happening, uh, why all of these issues are sort of subsects of this bigger issue. Just to give you a sense of it, so, um, you know, economists want to talk about inequality or poverty that, as if these issues are, you know, they call them externalities. There's somehow mistakes of the system. The system is not, you know, efficient enough to, to incorporate them. But they're actually the, the logical outcome of a set of rules. So for every dollar of wealth created, about 93, 94 cents ends up in the hands of the top 1% after the multiplier, after the money goes through the economy. So by definition... Can you say that again? How much is it? 93 cents. 93 cents. Yeah. Yeah, since 2008, it's roughly 93 cents. It's, it's increased since the, the financial collapse. So every dollar of wealth created creates inequality. Every dollar of wealth created creates poverty because it needs the, the, the sort of differential in order for the system to run. Um, because we have a fossil fuel-based system, every dollar of wealth created heats up the planet. So there's no way out of this. There's no like social capitalism or conscious capitalism that's going to save us. That's just the justification of people of privilege to feel better about themselves while they make a lot of money. And so un unless we dismantle that broader structure till we get outside of the debt-based capital system, which by definition needs to grow infinitely um, or there be recession, till we find a way to, to be in food sovereignty and have local currencies and have real strong sort of localization movement, we're stuck in this broader system. We're stuck in that oxygen. And the hope is really what's happening in the global south. And, you know, 70% of the world's population is in the south, in Brazil, India, China, Kenya, etc. And about half of them are under 30. So we have the youngest, most southern population in the history of humanity right now, while this major awakening is happening. And it's a, it's a beautiful process to watch. And I think it behooves us as Westerners to try to understand what's happening in the rest of the world and why they have this critique and why these movements are, are what they are, um, rather than trying to figure out, you know, how we make money or how we'd be successful or how we feel better about the work we do.